Alright, hey guys, what's up? Evil Zombie here. So, today I got something special. I got my Retroid Pocket 2 Plus in the mail finally. I ordered this way back in February. It's finally here. I'm so excited. And I want to share the unboxing with you guys so you guys can check out the device and just be amazed as much as me. But I like the case. I got the 16 bit. And I'm excited to see what this actually looks like in person. I'm so excited. The box is pretty nice. Um, didn't really get dinged up at all or anything like that. I got the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. I got a two, if I can pick up the, I'll slide it over because I can't pick it up. 256 gigabyte memory card right here ready for it. I got the case for it. And I also have screen protectors inside there that I will apply to this later. So let's jump into the unboxing. No, it doesn't slide off. It just opens from the end because I am an idiot. Okay, so inside, we of course have a device that actually feels heavier than I thought it would. Very nice. We have a manual, it's very bent. User's guide. Okay, so it has, well, it has two gigabytes of RAM and it has um, 32 gigabytes of actual internal memory. So that's good for system settings and all my games will be on here. All the stuff, got it. And all the stuff, got it. I'll read that later, don't worry. A USB, ooh, a USB-C cable, I like it. I like USB-C. USB-C is new, it's future. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I'm very excited. Okay, oh, that's really well fit. There we go. Pop that out of the way. And I have another screen protector. I honestly have, I have several of these now. Let me show you. Because I didn't know if this came with the screen protector, so I ordered a screen protector. And apparently now I have three. But I guess if anything happens, I have a screen protector. I have a spare. Okay. Oh, I'm going to keep them all in here for right now. Actually, maybe I will set up one of these on the video. Maybe I'll set up one of these. But look at that. Okay, so in my hands, this actually feels really good. The closest size comparison I have would probably be... No, it's a little smaller than this. Let me let me feel out the quality of this first. These really okay. These are actually really good. This feels different. This is one of the slider joysticks. It's different. It's like the Nintendo 3DS. It's not bad feeling. I don't mind it. It actually feels pretty okay. Um, it's more pocketable. This one is the Switch joystick. It's the same thing as the Switch joystick. Um, this one doesn't seem to have L3 functionality. Neither does this, and it doesn't have R3. The D-pad actually feels pretty good. You can see the travel there. It's not bad. It has a nice feel to it. It has a nice premium feel. Like that, I think it's even better than my 3DS. Or sorry, my, my DS. It's better than my... The joystick feels... Or sorry, not joystick. The D-pad feels better than my Pow Kitty. Feels, of course, better than the Tiger Electronics. Feels okay. I, it does. It feels more mushy than the Game Boy, but it feels the same level of quality. Cause there's no shakiness. There's no cheapness at all. They both feel really good. This feels really nice. But it feels the same level of quality as my actual original Game Boy. These, yeah. Let me test out the buttons real quick. Those are nice and kind of tactile feeling. I'll put this back. And put this back so I'll compare it over here to this okay I can kind of feel it. let's see these are kind of tactile clicky these ones kind of feel tactile and clicky and same thing as I'm pressing nope not these these are squishy no it's a nice tactile feel for these three those are nice these actually have let me test out no no I don't have any buttons that feel like that. Oh, wait, nope. How Kitty V90 has the same feeling buttons. But these do feel more sturdy. They feel like they're much higher quality, much tighter build. This definitely feels cheaper. <laughs> Sorry, I have, I have an array of controllers and game systems all lined up on my desk right now. Okay, so these definitely feel very high quality. I love that says Retroid Pocket 2 on here. 
even though it's the 2 plus they use the same case for it um, here's the information on the back so you can kind of get a good look at that model rp2 they they literally just use the same case is this the thing i can take off no Ooh, wait wait it is oh sorry i needed i needed that ah it's stuck in my hand there we go i got it okay so we're going to test out these these are very tactile these are very clicky a little noisy this is the l1 r1 Okay, they're not a bad feel. I kind of like the top ones to be a little clicky. This one has a little less. This one has a little bit of extra travel to it before it actually makes the click. This one feels a little more tight. So that, the back side's fine, but in here, there's a little bit of difference on that. I can tell that. It's a little bit of build quality issue. Um, the Z, sorry, the ZL, ZR, as you can see it. These actually feel very good. They're not as clicky, but they still feel somewhat tactile. They feel like the same switches that they use for these. So, me. No? Oh, no. Yeah, they're pretty close. The bottom ones, no. That's, that's very different. The top ones, they're definitely tactile clicky. These ones are a little squishier. But they have a good feel. They don't feel cheap at all. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. Okay. The screen, that feels like glass. That doesn't feel like plastic at all. That does not feel cheap. That feels nice. Huh, no wonder they gave me a nice screen protector. I'll put that on right away. Uh, I have USB-C, I'm guessing, for charging and for data transfer. Or, most, well, yeah, most likely for both, because it's an Android operating system. We have the volume buttons, which are also very tactile. Same as these. They feel the same. We have the power button right there. I won't press that yet. And this is the micro HDMI. I, uh, let me grab it. I got a cable for it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna get, let's see, let's test out first, 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 first. Okay, lost stress, screen protector's on, it's good. So let's turn this puppy on and see how long it takes to boot up. Has a little vibrate when you start turning it on. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I like that. That's reminiscent of this one. Very nice. That's very nice touch. Okay. Oh, I see. So I, I need my glasses for this probably. So R1 for next... English, yes. I will open up my internet, but I'll do that off camera. Okay, my Wi Fi is all set up. You're gonna take away one of the lights so that you can kind of see a little better. There. Got time zone, okay. Um, region, time zone. There we are. General Los Angeles area. Now, oh, I'll do this also off camera. Okay, I got a bunch of my apps uh, selected. And it's installing a bunch of them right now. Okay, so that's going to take a few minutes. Okay, so now my screen where I get to choose the launcher, I'm just going to do the standard Retroid Pocket Launcher, I think, for now. I could probably change back and forth later, but I'm just going to stick with the default for now. Yeah, I hope I can switch back and forth. <laughs> Wait, did it tell me I can? Yeah, I think I can. Okay, configuration completed. Cool. Next up would be running updates, and then after that I can add games, because it doesn't come with any games. I don't know what it's looking for yet. I'll figure out the system. Okay, so now I have all of them installed. Okay, now I select all of the ones I want. Oh, I like this. Does it work with this too? Yes. Ooh, I like that even more. That's biffy. That's sexy right there. Oh, I like it. Okay. I can I can deal with that. Oh, I can add apps to the main screen from here. 
Oh, I think I need a settings app. Oh, I need a Google Play app. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna have some fun with this. I'm gonna go out of this. Okay, I wanna look at my settings because I know I need to update. I need to run a crap ton of updates. Updater. Boom. I know wait. Oh, I am on the newest update. Oh, they shipped it with the new update. That's awesome. But yeah, guys, I'm going to keep going through all the setups, and then we'll come back with some games and some tests and all that fun stuff after I have stuff loaded. So I'll see you guys later in just a second. Okay, so I have it all set up. I'm going to move my mouse. I have it all set up. I've uh, got everything installed, and I just want to show off a little bit of it and just kind of guide you guys through it. And so far, I've messed with it. Everything feels great, except for this. This is a little bit finicky. If you're trying to be exact and precise in something like Doom, this is a little weird. It'd be nice if they had a second one of these. The Switch joystick is nice, it feels good. This is a slider. It, it slides. It feels really weird when you're trying to play something like Doom, or you're trying to have precise action. Yeah, just to let you guys know. So I turn it on, I have it in sleep mode, and it's actually a really good battery life. I've been messing with this, playing games, installing things, scraping, and I haven't had it plugged in really. Like, almost a not at all. Only a little bit to transfer files. So you press that, then you can press A to unlock. And this is basically the screen you come up on. I mean, you can either have it on just the Android, which is ugly, or you can go to the retro la the Retroid launcher, and that looks nice and sleek. I'm not gonna lie, looks good. I like it, I also love Touch Delta. So the first thing I wanna show you, yes, it runs Doom. It runs Doom well. It just takes a minute to load up. So one second. Okay, here it is. I'm just gonna put that back down. There we go. See, I'm not sure if I like to keep it up or not. I don't know, I'm figuring it out. But yeah, I'll just jump into something. Since I'm doing it on this. So far, the only glitch is really that. That's the only glitch I've had. So I just kind of leave it up. Oh yeah, I can. I haven't figured out how to get rid of all those unless I like. I have to go out of that and then back in, and then I go back in here, and then it's been gone. I think after that. Okay, there we go. That's it. We are gonna die right now because I'm just gonna run forward and start chopping guys. Yeah, no, <laughs> I just figured I'd run forward and slice, slice, slice. Uh, that wasn't very tactful at all, but it was so good. There we go. Press that, you go out. Other Android games work fine on it, but where it really shines is down here in emulation. So in here, um, I've already installed everything through here. I haven't gotten uh, retro or sorry reset collection set up yet. I will set that up later. Um, but yeah, you can either scroll through like that, or the touch screen makes it really nice and fluid. And all the games run really well in here. I mean, GameCube even works pretty well. I really don't even have any complaints on it. I'm going to show you a few examples, like, uh, oh, the original Game Boy, I like the way I can do different filters and stuff on here. Where's my Mario? Where's my Mario? It's one of my favorites. Always love this one. Okay, so I'm going to show you something cool. So first, since I have it set up with, uh, what's it called, RetroArch, this pops up like this at first, but you just touch the arrow and that goes away. Let me, ah, I can't touch because my fingers are big. So that, that, and under, oh, at the top. It's under video, I think. And output, no, it's not under output. I'm crazy. It's down here under video filter. Ah, Game Boy X3 green. There you go. That's beautiful, bright and green like the original Game Boy. 
Oh, it's this one. Oh, I forget the way the original Game Boy is set up, much like on that over there. These two. I am terrible because I'm looking at the screen through my phone. That's the best practice. That's okay. That's okay. I don't care. It's okay. It's fine. DS also works fine on it. Let me show you a quick N64. This is a console where N64 actually works. There you go. Those go away. It's nice and buttery smooth. Look at that. Not a stutter to be had. And the music is clear. I love it. It sounds so good. N64, very playable. N64, very playable. And pretty much all the games just run beautifully on it for that. Even on DS, let me just show you a little bit. And if you want to see the other key, you can see the video. So that's pretty cool. Or if you really like to see both, you can see both. I don't suggest it like this. It's a little small, but it's it's still very playable. And it's still actually pretty clear. I prefer looking at it like this, honestly. And the games actually do run pretty smooth. No issues with me so far, yet, at least yet. Let's see. NES looks beautiful. Super NES looks beautiful. Like, just... Just, where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? DK. I was going to show you a couple seconds. Oh, because I had RetroArch already open. I just start directly. Gorgeous, look at that. I love it. And it runs smooth as butter. Oh yeah, I can get, I can get rid of that. There, now it's, now it's nice and clear. Yes, I know I missed a life earlier, it doesn't matter. I'm not trying for perfection. Now, I know you're all waiting for the GameCube. I'll show you the GameCube. It does work. It has some stutters, just, just be aware. But it, work, it works fine. I played a little bit of Destroy All Monsters, I played a little bit of Smash Bros. Let me jump into Smash Bros, because that's what, that's one of my favorites of all time. Oh, here it is. I don't have a picture. I need to find a picture. Oh, this is actually a good chance. Oh, this is a good chance to tell you this. I didn't do this yet. So, you can t touch and hold on it. Then you can do box cover. And go to Google for it. Okay, now touch it. And then just go to download image. Cool, file downloaded. Now go back to box cover. Your device. And it's on internal storage under download. I think it's this one. There, see? Smash Bros. So as you can see, videos work fine, of course. I'm going to skip that. Because you want to see the nitty gritty. You want to see the actual gameplay. Yeah, no, I'm just kind of getting the hang of it. I still consider this playable. Bye bye. I still consider it playable. So GameCube does work. A little stuttery, but who cares? It, it works pretty well. You're not going to get 100%. Technology is just not there yet. But it works like 80%. And, it's, and that's pretty acceptable. So PSP. Everyone wonders about PSP. I haven't set up all my artwork yet. I've been lazy. So you see... PSP actually works pretty good. Come on Yamcha, don't be a Yamcha. Of course, you've been wondering about PlayStation. I normally just show off an easy game to jump into, Crash. I love Resident Evil also, it looks beautiful. 
Um, I have this upscaled times three, I think. Or no, I have it on times two with anti-aliasing. I love anti-aliasing. It looks good. It looks really crisp. Yeah, let's just jump in so you can see how smooth it works. Buttery smooth. Okay. And we're loading. Well, yeah, look how it, it does run very smoothly. It's PlayStation 1. It's a 32-bit system. It's going to run like butter. So good. Next up, of course, we got to go with the main man Sonic here. It's just the best. And you can play all the Blue Sphere that you want. Yeah, so as you can see... It plays smooth. It's it's Sonic. It's 16-bit delicious goodness. And here we are on oh no, here we are on Angel Island. Wee. So Genesis works beautifully. It's an older system. It's guaranteed to work great. We got Game Gear, which is basically like an 8-bit. It's like Game Boy, but better in every way. Uh, Chaos Spinball. There it is. Where's... Ah, there it is, the best one. Whee! Oh no! I love it. Boom. Very small. Very easy level. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We completed a quick level in 30 seconds. 34, sorry. And Dreamcast. I love Dreamcast. I can do the boost on this one. I forgot to tell you. When you go to Dreamcast, it loads you into the Redream emulator. And then you just select the game again. Always my girl Gina. We always play as her in Crazy Taxi. I'm not really looking at the screen right now. <laughs> Okay, so you see Crazy Taxi just runs beautifully. Crazy Taxi is smooth as butter. And I kill everybody just for fun. I don't care about the customers. We don't need the people. Don't need them at all. I got a Dreamcast going on here and I'm set. That's all I need in life. Wee! And a beach. There, we'll find a people down here. Perfect. Okay. Dreamcast works. But yeah, guys. I love everything about this. It's a lot of fun. And you can, of course, get your uh, regular Android games to work on here if you want to. Like, I got Sonic CD working on here through the Android version of it. It works fine. It reads the controls just fine. Um, Dungeon Nightmares, I enjoy that. It's one of my favorite horror games. Even Pixel Dungeon works well with this. Because it's a mixture of touch screen and the regular controls to make it easier to move around so you don't have to tap everywhere. It's nice, but you can run any kind of Android game on here and it runs fine. Uh, it's a very powerful little system and I actually really love the quality of it. So far my gauge on the quality, and I'm just going to put it to sleep. Look, after all that, I only used a few percent of the battery. I think I was like 64 before just a minute ago. That's from the pictures downloaded. There. But overall, it, the quality of it feels very solid. Like, I imagine this is what Ambernick would feel like. I don't have any Ambernick uh, products, but I'm at, this all feels like an official Nintendo console. It is... Let's see. It is lighter than the original Game Boy, but that's because I have a bunch of batteries in here. <laughs> but generally, the size is about the same. The main actual size. The screen is vastly superior. And I love the screen on this so much. Even compared to my Pal Kitty V90, the screen is just massive. It's nice. It's a nice half inch bigger screen. Let me turn that on so you can kind of see the difference. <clears throat> but yeah, you can definitely tell there's a difference between the screen size. Because I can fit this whole thing inside there. <laughs> this is a, it's technically like 2.9 or 2.8 inches. Something like that for the Pow Kitty. They say it's a 3-inch screen. It's not a 3-inch screen. It'll, they're lying about that. It's like a 2.8. It's a little smaller. 
This one is a 3.5 inch screen. I've measured it. It's a 3.5 inch screen. It's a gorgeous screen. It has great colors and everything. I mean, it all just, it looks very vibrant. It's great. I do like the quality of the screen on the Pow Kitty, but again, it, it does have its issues by just being too small and I need to wear my glasses to play. It's not a fair comparison to compare the consoles in quality because this is a $35 console now. $40 on average. This is $100, but it's the best value for your, it's the best value for your money because the nearest thing in quality uh, for the power would be $220 for the Ambernic 552, which is nowhere near as powerful as this still because this plays GameCube and it, it, it can dabble into PS2, but I don't care that much about PS2 games a little bit. I, I Not enough to really want to emulate on here. Let's see, the back of it, ergonomic speaking, it feels pretty good. I might get a grip down here, like on Etsy or something, just for a more comfort grip. Because over here, I am I feel like I'm having two different grips. I have this up here where it's comfortable, nice and normal. But down here, my hand is much lower. Just because I don't want to be doing that. I want to I want to have my finger like this. It's more comfortable. So I have to reach my hand down. And I want to be able to just kind of shift my grip a little bit without having to change how I'm holding this. So I might get a comfort grip uh, to slide this into just for those occasions where I want to play a long period of time. And that will do pretty good, I think. The back of it has no ergonomics or comfort anymore at all. It's just flat. But I love the stacked shoulder buttons. That is amazing. Most other consoles in this market will have like the inner row shoulder buttons like this. And that can get annoying if you're trying to find one in a pinch. This... They're stacked just like you have it on every other console in existence, and it's fantastic. I don't know, I, I like it a lot. It's really handy. Uh, I took this around with me. I carried it in my pocket a bit. It's very pocketable. Not as pocketable as something like this because clamshell design, but it's more pocketable than this. And it's about as pocketable as something like this. <laughs> That's a DS. But not quite as much just because it has the joysticks. I would suggest still getting a case for it. Uh, the case that they sell for it is a pretty big case. It's not going to fit in your pocket. It's this bad boy. But it does fit pretty well inside it. I have my manual and stuff like that in there. And it works fine. I just put it inside the case and then it's good. It just slips in there and it doesn't shake around or move at all. It's nice. I've been carrying this around with me. I don't even need to worry about charging it really. Because I haven't charged it at all since yesterday. And I only, that wasn't really me charging it. That was actually just me um, having it plugged in to transfer files. So I didn't really charge it at all since I got it. It was 100% battery when it arrived, even though I, they shipped, well, I guess they didn't ship that long ago. They shipped it like a week ago, two weeks ago. But it's fine. The case is good quality. It's nice and sturdy. I like it. And the screen protectors are all actual tempered glass. So, yay. So guys, my thoughts on it, it's a fantastic system. If you want to see anything running on this, if you want to know what can work, just let me know. I didn't put any Sega CD on there because I already own Sonic CD for the Android, so I just installed the Android. Um, jump on those because Sega's going to apparently remove all their versions of the classic Sonic games from like everything. So download them, install them, and be ready because when Sonic Origins comes out, those are going away. Anyways guys, I appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more reviews, comparisons, things like that, just let me know. I want to do some comparisons between this and the original Game Boy or the Game Boy Advance. Oh, and something fun is... Oh, I didn't even... Oh, yeah, I'll show you that another time. We'll do the testing on... Ow! On this cable another time. Um, I don't have it plugged in right now. I haven't had time yet, so I'll mess with this this weekend. And then I'll record another video just showcasing that, because I can play do gameplay directly on my computer. And full resolution and everything. And that's going to be fantastic. So thanks guys for being awesome. I appreciate you. Stay tuned. Bye.